Morning Church family. So what we're going to do today is first and foremost not meant to be a finger pointing or judgment of anybody. Uh, we got together with Pastor and we talked about some of these ideas and this is what God put in our hearts and what put in our minds and hopefully it'll come across to you. But what we're doing today is going to show you some different so perspective. There's going to be multiple perspectives. And follow along, and I want you, as you see these perspectives speaking, I want to see if you recognize anything that you've witnessed. Maybe you've witnessed this in a loved one, a coworker, a friend. Maybe it strikes home to you. However it goes forward and into your heart, we believe that God's going to take that and you guys can talk together. But moving forward, just kind of sit back and think about that. Before we start, I'm going to base this on what he'll do for us, so let's go ahead and close our eyes and have a little quick word of prayer. Father God, creator, guide, lover of us all, please take what we say today and help us all to uniquely think about how it fits into our lives. To know that we have hope through you, and that there was a message that you took special time to put in the Bible for us to hear and to see, and that we may all come together to share that with each other. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm reading from, I'm reading from Hebrews 10, 23 through 25 from the New Living Translation. Let us hold tightly without wavering to the hope we affirm, for God can be trusted to keep his promise. Let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works, and let us not neglect our meeting together, as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of his returning is drawing near. For the next few minutes, we're going to focus on Hebrews Chapter 10, verse 23. Let us hold tightly without wavering to the hope we affirm, for God can be trusted to keep his promise. Imagine God, your father, reaching out to invite you to hold his hand. He wants you to hold tight and cling to those promises found in scripture. The promises of ask and you will receive, seek and you will find, knock and the door will be opened unto you. In Jeremiah 29, 11, it says, For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. A good God? Your good God is letting a lot of bad things happen right now. I mean, have you ever, I mean, you've seen 2020, right? It is a complete dumpster fire. I mean, we have COVID, obviously, but then we have the actual wildfires. That's been crazy. It's just been a complete train wreck of a year. People are sick uh, mentally, physically, spiritually, all the sicknesses right now. And, you know, to be honest with you, I'm getting kind of tired of doing good things. Nobody even appreciates them when I do them. Even if they notice, they don't even say anything. You know, right now, all I have energy for is to keep my life moving forward, and that's about all I can keep together right now. We are in the midst of a great controversy. There is a battle going on between good and evil. We are in the midst of a great controversy. There is a battle going on between good and evil. But we have assurance that God has won the victory. God has promised us a Messiah way back in the Garden of Eden, and he kept that promise. John 3, 16, For God so loved the world, he sent his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God didn't send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world. God promises that he is going to come and take us home to heaven. He invites us to taste and see that the Lord is good, to cling on to those promises. 
promises that he will never leave us nor forsake us, promises that we can do anything through Christ Jesus who gives us strength. 2020 has been a hard year. Sometimes I just I don't know where the hope is. Start my day. I try to connect to the God. And I, I find that's a good, a good place to start because I, I think that helps me. And then maybe I check the news. And then maybe I listen to the radio or I talk to a coworker. And before long, it's like I'm forgetting all the things that God said he would do for me. It's like as I go throughout my day, there's all these things coming up. There's all these, if so-and-so wins the election, this is going to happen. But it's going to be just as bad if somebody else wins. The Where's the hope? I know God has promises for me. I know he has thoughts for me. And when I connect to those, I think that's how I get through these days. But a lot of times I just feel that it's so heavy. And it really is about all I can do to cling to that one or two promise. And I forget them sometimes. I forget just how many there are there. It's nice to talk to others sometimes about that too because other people kind of, but sometimes it's just about all I can do and I, it's hard. Hebrews ten twenty four, Let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works. Acts of love and good works, they don't have to be great and grand. They can be as simple as sharing a compliment, spreading a smile, being able to throw kindness around like confetti. Maybe it's providing a meal for a family in need or paying for the car behind you in the drive through We can do small, random acts of kindness that can become contagious. When someone does something nice for you, don't you want to share that kindness and joy with others? Confetti. What, what a mess. Have you actually cleaned up confetti? Confetti is fun for those that throw it. But for, for the person, me, that's got to clean it up all the time, oh, that is so annoying. You know, motivating others, I could barely motivate myself to make my bed, much less motivate others. I just, I just don't have the energy for that. You know, like, I think... Somebody else, they need to make the first move. Like, when was the last time somebody helped me do something at work, you know? I've got lots of projects going on, and no one is helping me. Like, hey, can we help you with that? That doesn't happen. I'm so busy these days. I'm so busy. I'm just, I'm taking care of me, and y'all just need to learn how to take care of yourselves. <laughs> I don't think we need to listen to that kind of negativity. Jesus reminds us, as he summarizes the Ten Commandments, that we should love the Lord our God with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind, and all our strength. And the second commandment, to love your neighbor as yourself. We need to treat each other the way we want to be treated. Remember, it's better to give than to receive. How can you give of your time, of your talents, of your resources today? Sometimes it just takes one person to make a difference. You can be that person. You can bring the change by being a blessing to someone today. <sighs> motivate others? Sometimes I wish I had somebody to motivate me. <laughs> I, what I just did with my kid when he whacked my TV at, with the hammer was not the kindest thing. <laughs> I mean, I know it didn't hurt him or scar, but... Got a little louder than I was comfortable with. How do I motivate when I can't even remember some names? It's, it's nice to see everybody here today in church and have so many people around. What can I do to motivate? I could use some motivation. Although, you know, sometimes it's nice. I've noticed that when I, I do step out and help others, I kind of feel motivated more to do more of it. You know, at work sometimes, I work with people that struggle. And I don't always get to talk to God, but I think sometimes it, it's, it's nice to know that you've helped somebody even without talking about God, but added that into the world. 
because so much right now is so negative out there. I've talked to some people, some close friends that have gotten very, very opinionated when it comes to politics lately. Or being asked to wear a mask. And I know everybody's got a different perspective on it, and I know people feel different ways, but sometimes it's almost mean. I wonder how I can motivate for kindness and for goodness. I wish, yeah, that's something I need to think about. Hebrews 10, verse 25a. And let us not neglect our meeting together, as some people do, but encourage one another. There are blessings to be found in corporate worship. God promises that wherever two or three or more are gathered in his name, he is there with us. God is with us to provide support as we protect each other from the attacks and the influences of Satan. We are called to worship together. And that could be here in our sanctuary on Sabbath morning. It can be in our homes or at our schools or places of work. It could be through technology. There are so many opportunities we have to worship together. We also have opportunities to encourage one another. Maybe you've written letters to your friends or sent a text message sharing some words of encouragement. But nothing compares to that joy we experience when we come together and meet face to face. You know, after a long week, honestly, the last thing I want to do is set my alarm again to get up early, to get ready, to get the family out the door. Half of them, they don't even want to come to church with me, so I'm dragging them out the door. It's, it's nice just to stay home, be alone, have some time to myself. I feel like that is just what I need. It's not, you know, it's not that big a deal. I'll just scroll Instagram, and at some point, there'll be a Bible verse or something encouraging that comes up, and, you know, we'll just call that, we'll just call that worship for Sabbath and just get on with our day. It's easier. Everybody's happier. It just saves so much time. I hear churches are compared to hospitals, places you can come for healing, places you can come for rejuvenation. And if you are in need of that healing, rejuvenation, encouragement, we are glad you're here worshiping with us today. But hospitals are also places for caregivers. And if you are filled today with God's spirit and able to share that joy and love with others, we are thankful you are part of the caring part of our church, that church family providing support to one another. God is our great physician. He is our only cure for the sin problem we are facing. But we also need the support of our church family and our community to be able to prepare ourselves for what comes ahead in the trials we face in this journey of life. There are some good reasons for not being here. A few weeks ago, a friend of mine told me that they had COVID. I realized I'd been around them quite a bit probably in that danger zone. So I made the call. It was a good weekend to stay home. Monday, I got to work, and I promptly got something crammed up my nose and sent back home. I was feeling even better about not coming to church that weekend. I felt like it was God kind of talking to me, because at first I was kind of like, well, was I exposed? Was I not? I mean, I want to be there. But you know what? I felt like God was telling me, yeah, keep your butt at home. (laughs) The next week, though, I didn't really want to get out of bed. I got results back that I wasn't COVID positive. But, man, getting the kids ready and getting up and, yes, snooze, and throw away the alarm and stay in bed. Got up, watched TV on on Sabbath morning, saw Pastor Hiram talk. It was a good sermon. I got something out of it. Up until the point when one kid threw a toy at another kid, and then there was a chaos. And But my wife and I, we actually, Natasha, we got to talk about it. And it was, you know, it was actually even a little better than being in church for the sermon. Because we got to kind of talk even while it was going on, and we weren't worried about it. At the same time, that word neglect. I mean, I didn't feel like God was telling me 
this time not to be at church. And I didn't feel like I had a good reason other than wanting to sleep. But, you know, it is hard to encourage somebody when you're not there with them. Then again, it's not impossible. You know, I asked for prayer on Facebook, of all places, and I was amazed at how many people responded with, you know, an even bigger response than just, we're praying. I mean, they followed up. Not everybody, but people, like, texted me or called and just asked what was going on, and that made a difference. So they were definitely encouraging me, and I wasn't in church. They weren't in church, but I was still getting encouraged. It is easier to encourage somebody that you can see, somebody you're around, because one thing I've thought about is when you say that, you're going to pray for somebody. It's hard to just pray for somebody unless you know through talking to them what they need prayer for, right? It's such a mixed up situation sometimes because there are good reasons to stay home. There are good reasons. And there are very important reasons, like it says, here for us to be together. It's kind of a confusing, difficult thing to go through sometimes. Hebrews 10, verse 25b, especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. Now is the time to choose who you will serve. Although we don't know the day or the hour of God's return, we can all take steps to reach out, hold his hand, claim those promises, and connect with our Savior. And then we can reach out and encourage and prepare the world for his soon return. <laughs> oh, drawing near. Did she really just say drawing near? Jesus' return is drawing near? You, you realize over there that, that the disciples in the Bible thought Jesus was coming in their lifetime. I don't know about y'all, but that's been a while ago. That has been a long time ago. My grandparents, they thought, they thought we would be in heaven by now too. So drawing near, yeah, I don't know that I believe all of that nonsense. I think we've got plenty of time. There's no rush, you know, to draw near to God. I can just, I can just worry about that when I get older. No rush, I don't need to do that now. Drawing near? I've been hearing that my whole life. I can think back to when my grandma, when she passed, we cleared out a storage cellar full of few food that was supposed to be for the time of the end. There was a lot of stuff there. She didn't need it for that. However, though, when she finally did fall asleep, I guess the next thing she knows is it will be here. And, you know, the more I hear about stuff on the news today, it's sure starting to sound a lot like some of that stuff in the Bible where it talks about wars, rumors of wars. I don't know if I would call COVID a famine, but I would call it a plague. Well, it's a pest anyway. Man, there's just so much going on in our world right now. I mean, it doesn't seem like there's any easy, good choice anymore in a lot of things. I mean, if we look at what's going on in our country as far as politics, that's just a reflection of what's going on in other places of the world, too. It seems like there's no one thing that you can really stand on hardly anymore that you can agree with in the world that you like all of it. Things that we used to be fairly comfortable on as a country or as a people or even as our church, it's like now... I like part of that, but I don't believe in all of it. God's promises still stay true. I feel like I feel like we don't talk enough about that. You know, I'm not sure where Laodicea is in relation to time and space and stuff, but I can begin to see what it talks about in the Bible about feeling lukewarm. Because there's days where there's certain things that I feel really hot about, maybe in a bad way. And I feel sometimes, a lot of times, really connected and on fire for God. And I feel like this is a good place to be. And I'm glad to be around others that believe that too. And then there's times where it seems like I lose some of that in my discussion of what's going on in the world. And things keep 
keep going by? I don't know. It's all kind of kind of runs together and then we wake up and do it again. Second Peter three nine. For God is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness, but is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. God keeps his promises, not some of them, but all of them. John 14, verses 1, 2, and 3 remind us that let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God and believe also in me. In my Father's home are many mansions, and if it were not so, I would have told you. For I go and prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, you may be also. So, who noticed a different perspective? Who noticed some kind of different ways of looking at the world we live in right now? What I'm going to do real quick is I'm going to have her read through, again, the whole thing. And I want you to reflect as you hear that and then what you've heard. And then I've got a few more things for you to think about. Hebrews 10, verses 23 to 25. Let us hold tightly without wavering to the hope we affirm. For God can be trusted to keep his promise. Let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works. And let us not neglect our meeting together as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. All right, my first question is this. And noticing the different perspectives that were shared. Do you feel that the perspective that was shared by this mixture in the middle is something that you could motivate? If a person came to you, and I will be honest, some of the things that I shared were personal. If they came to you, or maybe even if they didn't come to you, but you noticed some of those struggles, that you could encourage them, either here, as we meet together as a church family, or in this time when we're not meeting together as a church family in various situations for good reasons, or maybe because. Do you feel that like you, as a child of God, could reach out to that perspective? When their day is heavy because of the way the world is right now, and maybe they're forgetting some of those many, many promises that God has for us, do you feel like there's something you could do that would strengthen them. Again, what we were doing today is not to point fingers and pass judgment. There's some very good reasons why this is in the Bible, and it's very relevant at our time right now. Pastor Hiram and I have talked, and we've talked with a couple times, that there is stuff going across our country in many denominations, not just the Adventist church. Christians all over the place are kind of struggling with this, this separation. In different ways. It appeals to each of us. It hits us all differently. But struggle at the time of the end, being individual, is something we know we're all going to have to go through. So our churches, we're getting used to being apart from each other and receiving our blessing from afar. But how do we give back? Because a lot of what church is, it's about what you give, not so much as what you receive, because what you give can go farther than just you by far. It can ripple out. And so as we look at that, again, it hits us all individually. That person who has that struggle, that person who wonders maybe how do I talk or how do I approach. This morning, I had a medical procedure done, and my day has been a wonky day. And as I got up, one of the things that when we were meeting, talking about this, is Pauletta had spoken to me, and she said, you know, one of the things you can bring out is how you can pray right then with somebody out loud and not just say you'll pray for them. It, is, it doesn't fit every situation. It doesn't fit every person. But it is one thing to try, right? Well, as I was doing my medical procedure and getting everything done, the technician was talking more and more about God. And so as the end, I'm walking out, and all of a sudden I have Pauletta's voice in my head, and I think it got put there. And... 
I turned around, I went back to her, and I said, can I pray for you? And she said, yes. This is a woman who lives out in the woods in the middle of nowhere, who considers herself Christian but doesn't go to any church, who's had bad experiences with Christians or those who call themselves Christians, but still thinks God has an active role in her life. And the more I thought about it, the more I thought we're talking today about encouraging each other, coming together and being a part of it. So I prayed for her. And I felt a little uneasy doing it. I'll be honest. It wasn't the easiest thing to do. She's kind of still a stranger, even though, yes, she's a technician. And I left. But I did do that. I don't know, but I think that fits into the realm of encouraging or motivating. A final point I want you guys to think about, because ultimately I consider this seed planting. Not finger pointing, not judging. There's things here that you may, like I said before, you may recognize in somebody you know, you may recognize in your own heart, and you may wonder about. But ultimately, I want us to consider this. We know that there's a conflict going on. We know at a certain point in time, a lot of darkness entered our world because it fell from heaven. We know as humans, we often struggle with the negative. We look at news, and you've heard this for years, that what's more on news, good or bad? Right. It's more sensational. It takes us more interest. We better be prepared more for the bad than the good because you need to look out for the bad, right? So there's more of it out there. As humans, we tend to notice it more. But when the fall happened, fewer angels left than remained. Fewer servants of God in heaven left and broke with him. That means there are more there if we want them. If we ask for them, if we pray for them, there are more light. There are more servants of God willing to come and help us. Willing coming to help others if we ask for it. If we pray, if we come together, if we try to seek God, there is more strength there to help us because ultimately that's the side that's going to win. So this is not to be discouraging. It's to think. And what can we do? Where do we land? Have a wonderful Sabbath day. We're going to go ahead hey, and... Hey, so uh, and Andrew, do you... I've had... I got, I got the dark script today. <laughs> that is not how I live my life. <laughs> so it's been like, oh, this week it's been like, oh, Lord, help us to send a message for you. And, and then I get this, and I'm like, I don't know who to go to for this. <laughs> so if you don't mind, I'm gonna, I, would, I would really like to have closing prayer. <laughs> oh, dear kind Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you for this Sabbath day, your day of rest that you have set aside for us. And we just thank you for the opportunity that um, we have taken here to meet together. Some of us are here at church, and some of us are listening uh, live stream. We just ask that uh, you continue to lead and guide and bless wherever we are listening or watching. We thank you for this message in Hebrews, and we just ask that as we go through this next week for your Holy Spirit to send us uh, good ideas of ways that we can motivate and help and encourage and be there for each other. And then the next part of that is give us the courage to act on those things that you put into our heads. Uh, take away the dark side of all of us, and we just ask that you fill us with your light, uh, especially this Sabbath day as, and as we go through this week. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.